everybody, I'm Dr. Jane Montero. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel called Digital Design to the Rescue. I'm gonna be sharing with you lessons I've taught over the last couple of years using Chromebooks. And I'm also gonna bring in new ones that I've planned for the coming year ahead. So welcome, sit back and relax, and here we go. Episode four, Google Draw, inspired by contemporary artists. The amazing world of Jen Stark. When I think about contemporary artists, I don't necessarily jump immediately to using Google Draw. However, for this assignment, it became a fantastic way to reach students and really have students more engaged at the fifth and sixth grade level. Getting started with Jen Stark really requires the use of basic Google Drawing tools, and you can also get into using the scribble tool, um, the line, changing the line weight, and all of that. So this was one of my examples inspired by Jen Stark's work, which you can find examples of all over the internet. She is a super popular, really fun, creative artist. This is another one of mine when I was showing students how to kind of build the elements. So I wanted to go through this with you so that you can experiment on your own as well. So let's pretend we're opening Google Draw. We've gone to our Google Drive and you go to File and you go to New and then we click drawing. So to make this Jen Stark inspired, what I like to do is, let's first of all give that block a title up there. We're gonna call this Jen Stark, okay? Then let's come over here and pick a simple shape. I'm gonna go with the circle. And to get a perfect circle, take your finger, remember, put it on the shift key, hold it down while you draw. Okay, it's going to default to blue and it's going to default to a black border line. So let's do some changing. Let's first of all go to the paint bucket. A Gen Start color, all of those neon colors in that top row are excellent choices. Yes, students can create their own by going to the custom tool, completely fine. So let's say I'm going to start with this bright green. Wowza. Okay, then I'm going to go to a border color. Maybe I want pink. Now that's tiny, right? So go right next to that and let's go to the border weight. How does it look with three? Better. How does it look with eight? Oh, even better. How about 12? Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, so to save our eyes from all of this, we're gonna copy and paste this, put a smaller one on top, change the color. Control C is gonna pick everything up. Control V is gonna paste it down. Put your finger on the shift key grab a corner and pull that down. You can line this up by looking for the red lines like I found there. Okay, what are we gonna do this time? Let's go with a yellow and let's go with a red. Ah, okay. Maybe I do one more. Control C, Control V. Put your finger on the shift key, hold it down, take a corner, drag it in look for those red lines. And I'm gonna go this time with an inside color of black. And I'm gonna go an outside color with blue. Nah, I'm gonna go lighter blue. Okay, so there's one Jen Stark inspired shape, let's say. Do you remember how to group things? Since this is the only thing on my page, I could do a select all and group it. Or when you have more things on your page, take your cursor and just draw over the pieces you wish to group. It's gonna pick them all up, go to arrange and go to group. What does that allow you to do? That allows me to move this all over the place and it will travel together. That also allows me to copy and paste it, bring it somewhere else, bring the size down, put your finger on the shift key, bring down, 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 ungroup, how about you change the colors? Okay. So anyway, you can experiment a lot with this and kind of see what works best for you. Um, and you know your students, what's going to work best for them? Is it better for them to have, a, have an assignment where um, you're only requiring them to do certain shapes? only having new circles only, okay? You can do the same thing with triangles, come up here, 
grab a triangle, draw it. What do you want to do with that? Oh, let's have fun with color. Let's go orange. Let's get a border color. Let's go purple. And let's bring that up. Let's bring that even more. What can you do with that? Control C, Control V, bring it down. Just like we did before with your finger on the shift key. Look for some lines to help anchor it a little better. Change your colors. I'm going to go to pink on that one. I'm going to go to green. Okay, you've got another one. If you want to group something that's a shape like a triangle, what you can do, arrange, group, then I can spin it if I don't want everything straight up and down. Okay, let me show you the flying saucer. Flying saucers are very fun to do. It's a disc in a way. So go back to your circle. Rather than putting your finger on the shift key, don't and try to create an oval. Let's change those colors. Let's go with blue. Let's go with a border color of mm, we'll go red. And let's go up to about eight. Okay. Control C, Control V. Let's bring this one, line it up here at the top. Take a corner, hold the shift key down. Bring this smaller. Okay, what am I going to do? Let's change the colors. Yellow. Let's go with an outside border of green. Okay, you can do one more. Control C, Control V. So really, I mean, you can just go and go and go. What does help my students is to have examples of Jen Stark's work around the room, but not necessarily in front of them to copy, right? Bring that up a little bit, okay? Flying saucer, group it. Okay, so you can decide how many shapes you want them to have. If I go back to this one for a moment, look at what I did. Starburst, let me show you those. They are super fun. So a starburst is over in your callouts. Go back to your shapes, go down to callouts, go over to these stars. And you can put your finger on the shift key and I can go really big with this. Okay, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make this one blue and I'm gonna pick a darker color blue and I'm gonna go way up in the point size. Control C, Control V, bring this down. So really, I mean, this is a good one for students becoming very familiar with using these tools, okay? So really, you can talk about color, you can talk about complementary colors, you can talk about why when you put some together, things stand out, why do they clash? Okay, you can go on and on with that. You can put circles inside of other shapes. If I wanna just do a regular circle, bring this down and maybe I make that black. There we go, okay? Um, some other things that I did in this one. I did duplicating triangles, I turned things, I spiraled things. The scribble tool is very, very fun to use. So let me just show you that one. Scribble tool is over here. Go down to scribble. And it's really just like finger painting. Just press down. And I just kind of loop this. You are somewhat limited based on the keypad if students are doing using Chromebooks. Go to the select tool. This allows me to move this around. This allows me to shrink it and get back to my design. Where did it go? There we go. This allows me to grab a corner, bring this in, play around with this. What do I wanna do with that? Go next to the line, go back next to line weight. You can make this a dash, play around with the line weight, okay? Another thing that I like to do is do short little scribbles. And I create this little, you can kind of see what I'm doing up in the corner, this strange little hodgepodge of circles. Okay, what am I gonna do with that? I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try to group everything. So sometimes when you're grouping, you need to move other things out of the way so that when I come over here, I can pick all these up. Then I go to arrange, group play around with the point size, go to line weight. 
Now, why is this important? Well, Jen Stark does a lot with a lot of dashes and designs and lines. So control C, control V. Now I can start to move these around and around here and around here. So that just gives me an opportunity to play around a little bit more with shapes that I have on here. Let me get this triangle back over here. And you know, you can play around with arrange and order and send the front, send the back, all of that. Okay. One more thing that I like to do on these, you don't see it on this one, but you do see it on some of my other examples where I take, I do a search. So come over here to insert image. We're gonna search the web and I'm gonna look for a black pattern background. And let's see what comes up. Mm, that's not what I want. Let's say I want black line pattern background. Oh, that's what I want. Okay, so Jen Stark, really wild stuff. So I'm gonna click this and go to insert. And let's see where this lands and what it looks like. Perfect. Move it over. Arrange, order, send it back. Now you may say, why Jane, are you having them just copy and paste something from the background? Well, I'll tell you why. The background to me is just part of her design and it's another tool to let them learn to experiment. Why not, right? Why not? There's also, come over here and let me come back over here. There's another really cool search you can do for spirals. Um, let me find this one, spiral, black, spiral. Oh, and look at these, see? So these are also very much in the manner of a Jen Stark. Um, some of them you can like, this is a fun one here. I'm gonna do this and insert this. Some of these are small enough so that what I can do is copy this and paste this a bunch. So I'm gonna move this to the back, send it back. I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna send it back. So it's really endless what you can do. If you don't wanna have all of that you know, extra added in the back, you can have it like this, but here's the problem. You have that PNG background. So what you would wanna do is just add a background. What if I come over here and take the shape tool and draw to fill the space in? And what if I get rid of the border? What if I come over here and go for a gradient? Have you done these before? What if I come over here and I go custom? It's gonna to default to linear. I want this radial. Pick a color, what do I want in the middle? Bright yellow. Click the word add under gradient stops. And I'm gonna go with green. And go to the last one. And I'm gonna go with blue. And then I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm gonna go arrange, order, send it back. Voila. So there you go. These are a ton of fun. Like I've said, experiment, let your students enjoy this process. It's really just meant to be another dip into Google Draw. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a bunch for watching.